Hi, this is Inger Krizan, performing a short version of Bach and I for the IPO Gatsby Gala. In German, the word Bach means stream. My German grandmother used to sing this to me. Mir nicht Bach, mir nicht Bach, mir sollst der Heisen, mir nicht Bach which means ocean, not stream, ocean, not stream. That's what his name should be, ocean, not stream. J.S. Bach, born on the vernal equinox, wrote prolifically, consistently well, and with fascinating contrapuntal complexity. His music embodies a life-affirming vitality, and water imagery complements this vitality. In the I Ching, the trigram for water is Khan, the abysmal. Water seeps through tiny fissures, saturates and erodes, carving deep channels, serpentine monuments to its quiet, pervading strength. Imagine a brook meandering between tall prairie grass. Thickets of sumac and poplar outline the edges of oxbow marshland. A doe's head appears above last year's slender stalks, her large ears flicking. She dips her muzzle into the cool water where fresh water mussels open their mantles to receive the same ever-changing flow, sifting, accepting particles and waves all at once, unperturbed by any dual nature. <laughs> Behold a universe in a water drop. Imagine tardigrades trundling along with their eight probing legs on a little mossy frond on a rock. But suddenly a spring shower erupts. First one drop, two, four, seven. They careen off the surface of a pond, ricocheting in a pockmarked fractal pattern. It's an invasion of microcosms. Think of all those tiny worlds colliding and melding into the prevailing zeitgeist of pond water. What invisible revolutions have we missed? <laughs> still in the aftermath of the rain shower. An egret stands sentry in the shallows. Below, a school of escaped goldfish flashes. Over time, will the orange strain fade, natural selection in the form of large predatory birds and bigger fish decreasing the goldfish survival values in favor of more melanistic strains? Or will the garish coloration flourish mimicking a poisonous protection.
Across the pond, a flock of mixed warblers flitters through the tangle of bushes, snatching at insects. Look again. When did the egret shift weight to the other foot? and toads appear to spontaneously generate from mud, reeds, and hollow trees. They trill and chirp as they float on the pond surface, gulp and peep from mud banks and overhanging twigs. In the damp grass, a pair of sandhill cranes bob and weave, preening and clacking in a graceful mating dance. Like an animated Rorsarch chart, their reflected doubles mirror their gestures in the pond water. arises from the earth, heralding the beginning of a botanic arms race. Fiddleheads and Indian pipe erupt from the froth of mold just beneath the soil line. Skunk cabbage, jack in the pulpit, trillium, trout lily, mayapple, and other invaders prepare their bids to lure pollinators to seed and succeed. It's a silent sexual revolution. Meanwhile, underwater and cover of darkness, algae awaits the return of daylight to effect its own explosion. <laughs> currents and clashing temperatures give rise to a water spout, spinning in double waltz giddiness, misting the reeds and flooding the swampy perimeter of the pond. Now imagine a desert filled with whirling sand instead of water. A National Geographic special following the lives of a family of desert nomads. Here is the tent. Here are the rugs on which to sleep. Here is the family's daily ration of water. The woman takes a pitcher filled from a muddy well 
and carefully pours the contents into metal cups. The father's tankard, with its ornately worked hunting scene, funnels down to the youngest daughter's tiny half cup portion. Imagine growing on such a slender life thread and only dreaming of pools of water, of lakes and streams. It's a storm of the mind, a whirling dervish of abundance of infinite spinning life. lake, with sunlight glinting off the repeating pattern of waves lapping the shore. Imagine at its feet a pine forest with late snow melting onto clumps of moss and fiddlehead ferns, soaking and pooling, saturating and trickling in endless pattern. Rivulets form streams, streams join rivers, rivers cascade into misting waterfalls, pausing in calm catch basins. Trout throw themselves against rapids in impetuous vernal urge, the oft-repeated weft of life against the stony warp of death. Torrents of water blur the sharp rock edges below, crashing upwards in relentless spray against reluctantly retreating bluffs, the wonderful water of life. <laughs> Thank you. 